Welcome back. Today is the day. Because of Brian Fletching at Mad River Outfitters spouting off constantly about his favorite fly, the Swimmy Jimmy, and he won't tie it himself, I have to tie it. This fly is our number one requested fly to tie ever, and it's all his fault, and he won't do it, so I'm going to have to do it for him. This fly was Andy Sabota's tie. This was a knockoff of Andy worked for me for years. He he knocked up what he was shooting for was the his dad was a competitive bass fisherman. Jim was and uh, he liked to fish spooks, topwater fly, or baits. And so this was kind of Andy's version of a topwater bait, kind of walk the dog, something to go back and forth. It was and so basically he, he took the TNA bunker and he just bent the hook and put a hair head on it. And as he liked to tell me a lot, he says, I never had an original idea in my life, but I've sure made a lot of your flies better. <laughs> and he was bright. <laughs> but uh, it looks, it seems like a super complicated fly. It truly isn't. It's truly a, a pretty straightforward fly. Uh, it's a little bit, you know, scary on your head, but that, you'll see it's not that hard. And it, it doesn't have to be exact, you know, it'll, you'll see it's pretty simple to tie. But it's it's a little complicated in that you have to, you know, you got you just got a lot of materials to put on the hook over and over. It's kind of repetitive. This fly uh, comes in uh, chartreuse and white, the rainbow. Uh, it comes in the perch style. These are the bigger ones. We're going to do this, the two. Um, you can tie it any size you want. This is an incredible. I fish this. I, there's no place. Brian is in Ohio, but Brian fishes all over the world, and he's fished with me tons. We've done stuff for 30 years together. And he's, he's always saying it's his favorite fly on earth to fish. And when you fish it, you'll see why, because it's a blast. I mean, you get to just do stuff with it. You don't just pull the damn thing. You don't do this. You, you, you jack that thing with the rod tip and you make it do things and it never wants to go underwater. And when it does, it pops back up. It drives trout crazy. Trout act just like a bass with this thing. They'll come underneath it and stop and then just blow it up when it moves. It's it's a and and that was that's Brian's point is that it's just a super fun fly to fish. And so to get into it, um, we're gonna start with the hooks. I'm gonna use and I don't I, I'm not sure what hook Andy used. I can't find the original recipe. I'm pretty certain he used an X452 as his trailer. And, he, and these are stainless and I know Andy really well and he's the cheapest human being that ever lived so he would not spend this money he probably stole those from me but you can use the 2450 the same hook it's the, it's the same thing it's just not stainless and so if you're going to run this I'm going to do original formula because that was the stainless and then same thing with an x472 and I'm going to use a six and I'm going to use a two you, you can mix that up however you'd like and again, if you want to use a 2460 or whatever straight eye hook, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go with the original formula, which is with the X452 and the X472, because that's, and, and I swear, I, if you wanted to do it, because I almost did it on that, I thought he used a stinger hook on the first ones, but none of the, none of the ones that we're tying nowadays have them, so I'm going to stick with that. Um, Let's see. So it's basically not much to it. You're going to have marabou and two colors on the tail. You're going to use, and again, uh, you know what I do with that. If you're using chartreuse, you just, you want to do this in your colors, do it. Make it fun because the perch one, you know, the original is the rainbow and then it went chartreuse and we did the orange on uh, kind of the bigger orange and green for, because cohos love this thing. You take this to Alaska and you wog that thing and the cohos just blow it up. So we did it in different colors for cohos. But we're going to do the original. This is uh, white and green and we're going to have uh, a pink stripe. Now, and that, again, because I know Andy so well, uh, it didn't have a pink stripe. The original one has a peach stripe. My guess is Andy didn't want to pick a bag of this and so he stole some of my peach. And it's stuck. I don't know. I'm going to do it with pink because that's what uh, I've always done my own with. Because it's supposed to be a little rainbow. So other than that, body-wise, there's not much to it. And we're going to get to the head. Well, between them, I'm going to use uh, killer glass beads because that's what we used originally. I, if I, and I haven't tied one of these probably in 10 years. Uh, you know, I, I, I take them out of the bin, to tell you the truth. 
because they're just a little time consuming. But if you want to go to these bigger beads, you could do this real simple. I mean, you could put one on instead of, Andy used three on the original. That's what I'm going to do. And so, and that's, I'm going to use the killer glass bead, this red, red one right here. And then we're going to have deer hair, just belly hair, and, you know, belly hair. I'm not going to use, Andy didn't use belly on the, uh, use the white because belly hair is, you know, white is, that's the only thing you can use. And then the other one is you can use whatever color you're going to use. I'm going to use regular. I'm not going to use belly hair because belly hair is really, when, when you talk about belly hair, when you're doing the really bright colors, they have to dye that stuff. And you don't dye standard hair. You dye belly white and then to get the bright colors. And so when you dye it, you're obviously you're going to pay a lot more for this belly hair because there's just not much of it. It's not like you get to use the whole deer. You just, you've got that little tiny piece. And so I am going to use just regular old olive um, uh, primo strip. And so for between them, between the connection, we're going to have the uh, mega flash. This stuff's just really thick. You don't have to use this. It's Again, I don't know why he used this one originally. If you want to use regular flash boo, that's just fine. This is just thicker. And he, the, he's, he used four strands, I believe, on a, four to a side, which would probably mean you'd have to use like eight to 10 if you're using flash boo. So we're going to have that. I'm going to use a 12 pound or 0.46 uh, braided stainless for my connection. And then the 316 silver eyes. And this is one thing that I'm, I'm going to do different. Uh, not that the fly needs help, and it surely doesn't, but I like to use a little bit bigger eye. And if you wanted to go to a shad eye on this thing, Jeremy said earlier, man, that gray and white would be just money for, you know, shad kill. Absolutely. I mean, the olive's great. If you want to put a big shad eye on it, it's not going to hurt a thing. It's not going to make it fish differently. So I'm going to use uh, GPS or 100 on this and off we go. I have so much marimu up my beak already, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Give me an allergy. All right, so we're going to take this. I wax that thread just a little bit. <clears throat> and this is, uh, this is you, you don't have to be too exacting on here. Uh, generally speaking, I'm going to go two-thirds of the way back, and we're going to palmer this two or three forward. If, if you fill it well with two, do that. If, you, if it takes three, do that. Just... So I've picked out my marabou and I've already pre-cleaned it just to save time. So I've just, I'm looking for these nice wispy stems. You can see how never, whenever you work with marabou, I'm gonna come back here where you can see it. If you do that and it bends, don't tie it in. Keep going down to where when you bend it, it, it will bounce back. Otherwise that shaft's gonna crack. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put the convex side. That, you know, feathers are always shaped like this. So you got the concave side to, the, to your left if you're a right hand tire. And the convex side, or that's or on a feather, that would be the shiny side, but you can't see it on marabou. But so it's that side to the to my right. And then I'm gonna palmer these forward. Kick that other marabou out too. Get this marabou out of Jeremy's way, he's yelling at me. So I'm gonna come in here and tie this under like I do all my hackle stems. I go from left to right. Come here. And then when you tie in a, a marabou shaft like that, if, you, if it's too thick, you'll see it'll fight you. So I've got two turns right there, and I cinch it down really tight so it's not going anywhere. And then get a hold of this stem. Whoa. Like I said, if it's, it'll fight you. <clears throat> that was a bad start to the day. Give me you. I tied that in and loosened up just a little bit and didn't get a tight turn on it. So now we're tight. And that thread's wax, so it'll hold that nice and... So this, when you wrap these shafts, I tied in way too much stem right there. Give me that. Just make sure when you do this, that when you go around, we're gonna, we're just nice even wraps forward. Don't try to go right over, real, real close to one another. And just make sure it's nice and wispy. So it's just, you know, all those things are hanging out. Got two turns, so there I'm halfway around that thing. We can do it with one more. <clears throat> just like with all these, when I do it, I come back over top of this, just damp finger. And I'm going to come back just a few turns over it like that. 
And all I'm trying to do, and you don't have to have these one on top of another. All I'm trying to do is to kind of cover that up a little bit so if a tooth hits it, I'm not going to... I'm not going to have my fly unravel. So I put a couple turns over top of it. It's going to hold it in place. <clears throat> Same thing. I'm going to test this one. Come in here and we're going to have to have room, even though we're going to cover this all up. What do I do with that fly? Um, when this thing gets, you can see, I've got to have room for a head. You can see it inside there. And I've got to put this accent on the side. And so don't, don't rush all the way forward you know, leave yourself room. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward just like I always do. I'm going to go forward to where I want the head to end or to start. But because I'm going to, I'm going to take this right to the eye and then I'm going to put nice tight wraps right over top of the marabou plume, just like I did there. So I'm going to break that rule. I've got an idea where I want that. I put, I put that figure eight over top of that. And, now I, and then I put two turns in front and tighten down. And so now I'm going to come in here and just, just pay attention that, you're, you're, that the marabou is nice and loose. So it's all splayed out and you're just, we're just building forward. All that is is bulk. So now I'm going to come in here for the body is what you're, you know, you're trying to build this body. And because I'm going to, I'm going to do the same thing I did there. I'm going to come over top of it. Take a, just dampen your fingers. If you want to use a sponge, that's fine. Just dampen over top of it. And so I'm going to take the thread and I'm going to build a little head back over top. And that's what I did on the last one. I went right over top of that. There's that tip of that stem still. <clears throat> so I've still, now I've got room to tie that in. I didn't build a lot of bulk into that because that, that stem's getting pretty thin at the end there. So and now I've got room for the, the marabou, which I threw over here. And we're just going to put, and what side you put this on doesn't really matter. It's just make sure they're the same when you, when you tie it in. So I'm going to take one nice plume. I'm going to use just the tip. And this is, this is just supposed, you know, you're trying to build a minnow, right? And so, well, it's actually is supposed to be a little rainbow, prepar, like this big. All you're doing is giving it a stripe, so it looks like it's got, so it's a, you know, it's kind of the idea of this thing that's on its side and it's dying. So I'm going to take the, the, the marabou and I'm just going to stroke this back so I know how long it is. And, you know, you can look at the samples, they're basically ending at the same point. So I want this, this this accent or the dark side of the marabou <clears throat> to be the same length roughly if it's a little short that's okay too i do that with mine because generally the body would end and then you would have a tail anyway but so but that's just personal whatever you like to do uh, it truly won't make any difference so we come in there grab that just give it a couple nice tight turns clip off your excess here just make sure it's on the side, just, you know, if it's a little off, it ain't going to kill you. But we don't want to be a little off. One, two, three, four, four turn head. Give that a spot of glue. Especially if you're using GPS, you, uh, GSP, GPS, if you're a global satellite positioning thread. If you're doing GSP, it's really slippery, so you want to use that. Uh, just give it a little hit of, of glue. What do I do with my wire? I already cut that. So now I'm going to take this wire, put that through there. While it's still on there, give it a little tug. So you, want to, you want to form that little tiny loop right there so it's tightened down. Make it easier to put these on. And, and again, just in, in the last few videos I've done about these, because I always use, you know, I was using these glass beads starting back in the 80s. It's all we have. We didn't have all these other ones. And now there's all these 3D beads, and I grabbed the white ones. It comes in, hell, it comes in, I don't know, 10 colors probably. But <clears throat> it's a lot easier to use those bigger beads than it is to use the little ones. And in reality, it's probably a little bit more durable. So I'm just going to put, because he did it, he put three on his, I'm going to put three on this one. 
you know, and, and there's a little bit, if you've got, like I just grabbed one really big bead. If you've got two really big ones, they're, they're, not, they're not the same length, that's for sure. But if you've got one really long one, like that middle one's kind of long, if you had two or three, two of those, you might not want to, you might want to just have the uh, two of them, but I forgot my hook. So as you can see, this is the X470, X472, and I already bent it. I bent it kind of in a two-step, and what it is, you want to have a roughly a 30-degree bend. Uh, it's just take your sample. Just grab the sample if you have one. If not, just get the shape you kind of like, you know, and just get it right there. I put a little bit of wax on that thread. Kind of missed putting that on. Now I'm going to take the, I'm going to make sure first and foremost, like we do always, make sure that these wires haven't crossed and they're running parallel to one another like that. So there's no, you don't want to crisscross. Pull it nice and tight. And that's why you put that wedge because they'll stay parallel right to each other like that. And you can see that they're not, they're not, if they twist, if they're like this over top themselves, as you cast it, the pressure on that back hook will make it turn sideways and it'll just, it won't ride true how it's supposed to. So I'm going to bring that up until it touches. I don't want it to stand up. I don't want it to be way too long. When I get here with the beads and I pull that, I don't want it, I don't want to squash this into the eye. I don't want that so tight that it's pushing and slowing that down. So I pull it just so there's a little bit of gap there. Now we're just going to run this forward. I don't run this one through the eye, even though it's, you could if you wanted to, but it's got that little bend in it. And I've never had one of these come off. You can take it right to the eye if you want to. I stop it a little bit short, so I got, just because I'm going to tie on this with the hair. And then hit it with a, drop of glue, crazy glue. We tried, we've tried many times uh, with these things because I might, you know, in the dungeons, all the ones with lead eyes, I always go through, through the eye and pull it back. I have tried, when we glued these on here, I have tried so many times to pull one of these off and actually hook it into the vise and pull as hard as you can't pull that wire off. It's, it's not coming off. Okay, <clears throat> so just letting that glue kick. Don't get your face over top of that while your nice tight wrap's coming back. <clears throat> Give me an old one. And I usually take a feather. If it's still kicking like that, kicking means it's accelerated. It's, it's, it's setting the glue. It will blind you if you stand over this. It'll, it'll make your eyes hurt so bad you won't believe it. And it probably isn't good to smell. Because you'll be like Johnny. All right, so we're going to have <clears throat> inside, this is the flash we were talking about. <clears throat> These things right here, uh, that's what we've got. There's four to a side. At least I think there is. Sometimes they have three or four, but uh, it's this mega flash stuff. The really big stuff. Four seems too much to me, but I'm going to do it because I would put three on my own. But... Staying true to the original, we're going to put four. Andy's going to call me and say, I never put four on, you idiot. So I'm going to put this in. If you look, this is the commercial one. And so get out of there. You can see how long that is. It's about an inch, inch and a quarter. So he's got it coming back over into the body. It's going to have a lot of marabou. It's all going to get mixed up. So I'm going to put that on the back side. Give me you. Didn't like that, but I like I start those all together as one piece and then it doesn't come here. There's still a little tackiness to that glue too. So I'm going to just kind of get, don't worry about it right now, you know, how long it is because you can trim it. Just don't, don't make it too short. So go forward just enough so you can bend this back. And then what I do with mine is I just, 
I get them where I can see them and I cut them at the same length. Just take your scissors to the other side so now they're all the same length. <clears throat> and is that, and then just, just kind of let them break loose wherever they want to go and they'll be all over the place. So I, and I wet though, you saw what I did, I, I wet those and so I could work with them. I, I did it, I wet them so I don't have that big piece of it. And then it, it's just easier for me to work with, 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 uh, with them together. As you start casting it, these things are going to go all over the place. If you want to wrap them right now, go for it and just get them wherever you want. Okay, now I'm just going to repeat those steps. We're going to take this all the way to here. This is going to take you at least three, no, no less than three, because you have to build the bulk. So this is a good time for the talk too much haters to hit the fast forward button, because once I tie this in, we're going to have to repeat this. Give me you three times. If it takes you four to fill it, if it doesn't feel good to you, that's fine too. It doesn't matter. Just, you're just going to fill this gap. We're going to repeat it. One, two, three, at least three. And again, you do not have to make sure it's nice and wispy. You do not have to make these right consecutive one after another. If you, if you leave an eighth quarter inch gap between them, that's just fine. Cover it up a little bit. And so what I do with mine, so there's one. I'll come about to here. You can see it's about, you know, 3 sixteenths of an inch or so. And just tie in another one and go forward. You just, they're all going to, obviously it's going to get covered up by the next one and the next one and the next one. Figure eight, two in front of it. Cinch it down tight. Don't loosen your thread up. Move forward. If you got a big stem back there, cut it. If you don't, leave it. So that feather, I had a twist in it right there. As I started to wrap it, that, that thing was twisted. And so I noticed it actually had a, a twist and a half in it. And I undid it so because otherwise these aren't going to lay down to the side. And when I start wrapping the thing, it would have it would have uh, started collapsing all those marabou plumes around it wouldn't have be nice and full like that. <clears throat> see, you can see why you can, why you can uh, move forward because you're, you're just building bulk with that anyway. So I'm going to go back over top that just like I said, four or five turns is usually what I do. And this is the last one here for this. <clears throat> and so you can see we're getting this big bulky marabou. It's going to settle down. The beauty, the beauty of marabou, there's nothing on the planet. They'll, I don't believe they'll ever be as synthetic as cool as marabou. It's got soul. It moves and it undulates in the water. And so when it gets wet, it pump, it, when you pull on it, it goes down. When you let go, it does just like that. Poof. And, and that's the beauty of this fly. Is that you, it just moves all by itself. You give it a pull and then you let go and it just moves all over the place. Right over left, left over right, two in front, cinch it down, a couple forward so you don't. And we're getting a nice build on that. We, you know, we, we're fine with, we probably could have got away with two if I just went forward, but I'm pretty sure I left that stem over there. Give me you. I'm pretty sure Andy did three on his. See that right there? There's. Just as I was going, there was that, that trapped a bunch of that marabou. Just back it off and just get it so it palmers out really nicely. That's plenty. I just pulled that tip off is all I did. So now I'm going to just clean up that just a little bit. We've got to put three more plumes in here. So we've got to have room. Now take your sample and, and look at your head. So we've got to have the heads about the length of this hook right here, but we still have to get this in. And we've got to get a collar. Make sure you've got room to do that. And if you don't, your fly will never fish ever in the world. Not true. If you don't do it quite right, 
it, it'll look just fine. Didn't I pull two of those? I did. So, on Andy's fly, like I said, the, the original one, I, I don't know if he used peach or not. I don't know where this peach thing came because all the, all the flies that are commercially tied um, all have this kind of peachy looking orange stuff in it. Uh, I, I would, I'm going to put the pink in because I think that's what it was supposed to be. Bottom one, top one, which never put this stuff in your mouth, ever. So it doesn't, you don't want it to go back too far. You just, you just want it about half, not quite as long, just, just barely shorter than the, when, than the, uh, body, the marabou's forming. Nice clean set, you know, don't, not too much bulk in here because we got to put stuff in there. Now we're going to take, uh, if you've got a really great plume, uh, you might get away with one. This is a, this is two. Pretty much, again, just look at your, look at your sample. If you've got a really good green, like, see how thick that is? If I was tying this one in, I'd put two in. That's subjective. This, this, whatever you, you look at it, you like it. This is a, this is a really thick, thick plume. I'm going to tie this in just as it is. I don't, I don't think I need two on this one. Don't do that. Use your, use your sponge that Tom gave me. And it's over there. I forgot. So I'm going to take this. I want it, I want it to layer over into the green. Don't tie it so short like this that there's all this. I want it to layer right over top of it so it comes so it looks like it's all one piece, right? So it's laying in there. Go at least a quarter. You can see back here's get that out of the way a little bit. So you can see the green. I want it to come, you don't have to come all the way back like that. You don't want it right here. Just maybe a quarter of that other green. Just tie it in right so it's layering. Jeremy's got me sideways again today, so I can everybody can see. I hope I'm not blocking it. It's kind of hard to there. Just nice, nice tight wraps so that you got a nice clean space to work with here. Just kind of get all this out of the way. Because now we got to put the thing that everybody's fearing. Now we got to build the head. Where'd the thing go? It's getting lost in the piles over here. So We've got our marabou in, we've got our flash of boo in, we've got everything, we've got the stripe. And again, not really that complicated, just, you know, a lot of people when they tie these, they tie up all the tails in advance. Well, a lot of commercial tires do that anyway. So you get everything, you just sit around, you just tie tails. And then you go into the, you know, connect and everything. So it's really pretty, not that complicated to this point. At this point, it's going to get a little bit more complicated because we're going to do a two-tone head. And so we're going to try to get this nice straight line. You're going to have a little come over here. If, if you're, you know, if, if you haven't done this a lot, you're going to get some migration uh, of your hair back and forth. You know, they'll have a little green stripe in here and it's not all perfect straight. Don't worry about it. It, 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 it actually, I think it looks better if it's got a little of that, but we're not going to, we're not going to shoot for that. We're going to shoot for having it nice and clean. And so, we're going to take our deer hair, which I have enough up my nose right now because of that tying these things earlier. I'm going to take a pretty good clump of deer hair and I, I do mine. I think I do it different than I do it my collar sets. I know the commercial ones don't do this. I know they use the head or the collar as part of the head. You can do that if you want to, you, you know, force it in there because you're going to have, it's going to be tied in right here. I'm going to start that head right there and you're going to stack this again. I, I, I just have always done my collar separate. Uh, if you want to use, I'm going to tie it in and I'll show you what I mean. If you want to tie this in and use the collar and take your sample, what do I do with that thing? Just, it, there, there's no rule to this, but it, you know, you can see how long the collar should be right there, you know, by, by the commercial standard. And so I would tie this in right here 
and I could use this as part of the head. I could come in here and I could set it and use it as part of the head. I don't do that. that now this is just me. If you want to do that, it, it'll be just fine. I like to tie my collars in first. I get more, it's just, it's, I've done it on, I've always done that with my flies. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to tie that in. I'm going to hold it nice and tight with my left, uh, my thumb and my forefinger. And then I'm going to put two turns through that and I'm going to go right through that hair. And I'm going to have a nice compact collar. You can see it's, it's exactly where I want it. And then when I come in, I'm going to, I'm going to go over this a little bit more. So it'll cut, it'll, when I go in there with my next turns, I'm going to kind of cinch that down. Now this collar is never going anywhere. I'm going to duplicate this on the other side. It doesn't have to be, this doesn't have to be a super thick collar. Clean your hair out. Always clean all this crap out of the hair because that stuff's what keeps this stuff from compressing down and holding really securely. I haven't even brought up the coronavirus yet. I was going to bring that up to great lengths because we're in the heat of it right now. And this is a safe activity. We don't have bird flu anymore, so we don't have to worry about it in our stuff. It's a safe activity to do at home all locked up. Okay, same length right here. We're going to take this, got this on one side, I'm going to come over here, same length, cut it. I'm going to spin my thread to the right. That just simply allows me to, the thread will lay back. I'm going to come in here, catch it just a little bit, pull nice and tight. It's a little harder to, I'm trying not to get in the way of this thing leaning over. One, two, and I'm going to come right there, and you can see I've got a nice, even break on both sides. Still see, and I'm going to go right through that stuff just to double check that that's nice and secure. Take your wax. And just that's just to set this because I'm going to I'm going to start adding stacks. So I'm going to just give that a couple sets right there. Throw a half hitch in it. Now I'm going to put two stacks on here. To build this, I'm going to put them, just, you know, to build this head. I've got a nice clean break in my in my head underneath here. Maybe got a little bit of hair right there. Shouldn't be there. Just because I want that pink to show. Now I'm just going to stack them. The the how you stack these is up to you. I like to I like to put my white one on first because I can see it. If I don't, I just don't for some reason I don't like to see it get matted down. I, and I'm sure that means absolutely nothing. But don't skimp on this first one. But I want to have a nice thick first piece that goes on here. It's, it, it doesn't have to be really, really long. I'm going to cut these tips off. But I want it, and if you want to turn it, if you're using a rotary, you know, I always tie on the Renzettis, the rotaries. I like to turn it on its side so I can get in here. I'm going to come right, I'm going to come right behind this, right right behind, in front of, excuse me, the collar. I got to have room for one more stack in here. And so I get this sideways and I like it because I can hold the, I can hold my thumb and forefinger nice and tight. One, two, and just pull, keep it off to one side. Just don't let it go. Don't let it migrate. I kind of squeezed a little hard right there. And so I go, I just get a nice bundle right there. You see that? And I go through it one more time at least. And I try to get away from it. So I just keep it to one side. Just, just, once I get it over here to the side, give it a couple turns and just cinch it down so it's nice and tight on the side. We're good. I, you know, I see, I see people, I'm going to give that one more, just nice and tight. I see people do that, put glue on there. I don't do it. It doesn't move. If you, if you cinch it down nice and tight, it won't move. <clears throat> well, maybe a little, not much. Same thing with this one. I want a nice piece of this. Get a little more than I need there. Nice big piece. And I'm cutting these, I cut these tips off. I don't need, I'm not, I don't want to see those tips. I want to be able to get in here and make that head. I'm going to come right back through the same thing. 
one, two, pull, and pull right at me. See how much, I got a nice, nice stack of hair and I'm really tight. There's this, you, you get this fine line <laughs> between pulling that really tight and having it go poof right through all your hair. It's just, you just get a practice with see what it's, you know, how tight you can make it. And then just, I, I tend to go through it kind of slow, just to, I kind of grab a few and just set it again. And I walk my way forward just a little bit. Just keep the hairs back. Just, just you got to fight it a little bit. Look on your bottom. I probably caught one on the bottom so I wasn't paying attention. Just keep it out of the way. And then I can move forward, give it two, and I cinch it down. Now pack it in there a little bit because you do, unlike when I do my other flies and my dungeons or any of my sinking streamers, I don't want I got a little bit of hair caught in there. Not too bad. Um, that's where the eyes going to be. When I do my, my sinking flies, flies that are made to dive, I don't want my heads packed tight. I want it to be really loose. And so I, I, I would never pack that in. But this one, it's kind of supposed to be, you're supposed to be buoyant. It's supposed to stay on top. And when it does go underwater, it's made to pop back up. Almost done. <clears throat> it's good, I'm losing my voice. Most of you would say that's great. Some of you would say, I wish you'd lose it forever. All right, so now I'm going to take, ouch, got a cut in my hand. One, straight down, come back, catch it again. Just make sure it's on the side. I got a little sloppy on that one. Got a little hair off to this, a little bit off to the side. Just work your way forward. If you catch a few of those hairs, that's fine. Actually, it, it's better if you do if you do a couple turns through that hair so you're not going right one two right over top if you do the second one right through it it just helps cinch it down it takes a couple of these things i i haven't tied one of these things i was we were talking about i don't think i've tied one since andy was here i think that's been about 15 years uh I had a bunch, we tied a bunch in the, in the day. When I finally got through them, I started buying them. And so it takes a while, that, you know, I couldn't remember the proportions, uh, you know, how much hair. So now I'm gonna, I just got my finger here and I'm just holding it in place. So it just, it stays there. I want a nice even break. One more through it. Now I can work my way. I got two through it. Pat Cohen sitting at home going, God, Gallup, you're ruining that thing. Superfly. Okay. The super hair guys, they might be frightened right now. All right, not too bad. I don't have my little deal to, I stood that up so I could get in there. I'm just gonna whip finish this. I want that right, all the way, right down to the eye. I got a couple stragglers in there. Okay. Come back here. So now we've <clears throat> now we've got the head pretty even. As even as mine's gonna get. So just make a clean, just making sure I don't have any stragglers over here. One or two of them isn't gonna hurt anything. Same thing on the bottom, just double check. And we're gonna trim all this, so it's gotta be pretty tight to get the shape. Uh-oh, don't know if I got a sharp blade up there. So the first thing we're gonna do, this is on a bend, right? This thing's bent down. Fluff this stuff up so you can you know, see what you're trimming. Just fluff it all up there. Now we're gonna do the nice flat. <clears throat> Take your, here's your sample. It's nice and flat on the bottom. So we're gonna just come in here, just get a nice sharp blade. I think this one's kind of dull. Might have to find one. Okay, that side's good. Just a nice, you got plenty of time. Just take your time. It's gonna get an eye on the top and the bottom. Get as close down there as you can. Because this one's really, all this does is show profile. 
So we're going to trim this from the side. Now I'm going to take the top. I'm going to, I'm going to flex this blade. And there, I have no way to tell you. You know, you can see it's about like that. And just here's the original, right? So it's basically like that. You just don't want to cut too much. So I start, I don't want to cut these edges. So I start, I start like this and a little less than I would, I would, than I want to end up with. So I'm going to come in here and push. I just kind of, I don't want to take any of the side hair off. That blade's a little bit dull. I don't want to take this side hair off right now. I, I like to get, I like to get my shape down. If you go in for the cut just like this, and you go boom, and you you just go for it right up. If it's too small, it's too small. You're done. And so if you'll take your time just a little bit, come in here with a, a, a more open blade, so it's nice and wide, and get just get this shape you want. And again, it's it's your fly. It's whatever shape you like. And so then you can start to kind of come a little more aggressive with your blade. But I tend to do that, and just like all my flies, you know, over there, got a couple stragglers hanging out there. I take it, and, and I, I, I just beat on this constantly. Bring Look it. at, whoops, sorry, got yelled at. I, I take this, and I just, that's my shape. And so I've got it nice and loose right now. And then I come in from this side, and I just start, I trim it out once I've got that rough shape. Beautiful. Man, Cohen, turn off that TV. Oh man, I let that get, I let those green ones get over top there a little bit. Well, at least now I know where I'm gonna put my eye, right there where I let those migrate over into the other one. That way you'll never see it. Whoa, that was an aggressive cut. That got a little crazy. Okay. So there we've got a nice two-tone. Your head's nice other than that little screw up right there. We got one or two of them up in there. That's going to be all right. So we've got our shape. You could, this fly, you could take just a little bit tighter if you wanted to. I could make this head just a little bit less bulky. But I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and go with it right now. You could make it a little less bulky if you wanted to. Pull these off to the side, see how many you missed. I'm just gonna go for it right now, and just because I talk so much. So, but you can see, we've got a rough shape, right? We've got a rough shape. There's the, you know, the commercial style. Essentially the same width, same, everything's the same. You got a nice flat bottom, so you got a place to put your eye. Now, I don't know if I have that thing. I think I gave it away. Um, Not sure. Andy, I don't have any. More. Andy would take a cauterizer tool, and he would burn these eyes in. That is way too much effort. I am not burning the eyes in. <clears throat> I am going to. But back then we didn't have UV resins like we do now. I could get these old eyes out. They don't make these anymore. That's a little bit bigger than Andy's were. So here we go. Looking things over, got a nice spot for, so we've got a spot right here. We're going to take, I got a third eye. So I'm going to take just a little bit of clear glue here, or I mean um, UV glue. What I was saying, man, I, I really, I'm not going crazy here, uh, but man, I would really like to see on my, and I didn't even think about it until Jeremy and I were talking about it earlier. Uh, I would love to put a, and I'm going to, put a big old shad eye in one of these things. I think it'd look cool. So I'm just going to hit that with some UV. And again, you can still go back in and trim this all up when you're done. So I'm just giving that a shot. And the same thing. And this is where Andy would come in and he would take his cauterized his burning tool. And he would just set a little... A little hole down in here, like right in there. Uh, this UV, they'll pop off eventually anyway. They're probably kind of superfluous. They probably don't do much. 
but I'm going to put that right where I screwed up that little bit of white. Just let that soak in. Give it a nice enough. Just let it soak in. And then come in and cover up your screw up like Kelly did. Hey, right, come back here. Where is it? Right there. Just push that down just a little bit. She'll hold until the hair breaks. Voila. Up go the legs. So, now you would just take, at this point, you should be pretty well done. Uh, you can go in and get whatever little stragglers in there you got. Just get them out of there so it looks nice and clean. This one's got, this has got a pretty, pretty much everything's where I would want it if I was working it for a commercial fly, or for, a, for my flies, I mean. And so, that is the Swimmy Jimmy, for sure, our number one most requested fly to tie. And again, if it wasn't for Brian at Mad River talking about it so much, it probably never would because it's a complicated fly. And in the respect that you can, the head work takes a little bit of practice, but it's not that tough. I got a little glue on that eye. You can see it's got a, it's got a unique profile. I'm going to turn this, I, can you see that, the bend, Jeremy? A little bit. It's tied on a 30 degree bend. So you can, where's that sample? I don't know if you can see it here. You can see it, it's, it doesn't look like much. It's about a 30 degree. The idea of this thing is when you pull it, it, it pulls its head, goes underwater. This was the original bent fly like this. There's a bunch of flies that do it now. This is the original one. This fly is probably done 2002 or three, I don't know. It's an old fly, it's been around a long time, but man, this thing is money. It's, it's just the funnest thing you'll ever fish because you get to play with it. Don't just pull it, make it do things. Make it swim around and, and get erratic and just do what it was designed to do. Really fun fly, fun fly to fish, fun fly to tie. Hope you liked it, hope it helps you out.